We are here in Queen's University Department of Chemistry with the speaker of the day, the Synlet Synthesis speaker, sponsored by Tima, uh, Alison Frontier. And she's from Rochester University, uh, not too far from us, across the lake. And we've had a wonderful lecture from her today in methodology, total synthesis. And we're going to talk to her briefly about her ideas in chemistry and her career. So Andy Evans is with us, and we sponsored this together, and he's going to ask a question. Yeah. So first of all, thanks very much for coming out and giving a great lecture. Very well attended. So first question is, when did you get interested in organic chemistry? So um, I didn't know what organic chemistry was until I was a freshman in college. And, um, and I was convinced to take the course, and, when I, and I learned that it was a three-dimensional science, which I liked very much. And then, uh, and then I read a book called The Serpent and the Rainbow, which is about identifying the molecule responsible for um, zombie powder. <laughs> and the, and, the, and the, the book is about the scientists who had to identify what this molecule was, mm -hmm. and, and that's when I got interested. Cool. That's a different answer. <laughs> so I relate to that the gunpowder business very much in my youth as well. Uh, think about organic synthesis in terms of the fascination it has uh, for all of us. What fascinated you about it? But about synthesis, um, it's, it's really that you have a structure that you're interested in making and you can look at it for hours and come up with many ideas. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes what I do is I put I put three structures um, in front of my desk and I look at them every day. And sometimes a year later I'll see something new. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so it's it's uh, it's just an evolving um, thought process yeah. that I like very much. I think we relate to that as well here. And yeah. you have another one. Yeah. Uh, next question is uh, uh, what's one thing that most organic okay, chemists don't actually know about you? Something to yeah. Well, um, I teach scientifically. Of scientifically, <laughs> it is scientifically. No, but so I teach. I teach a course. Co coming back to zombie powder, I teach a course at the University of Rochester called the Chemistry of Poisons, okay. where we uh, talk about the um, the the reactivity um, of of the poisons, and it's not just a science class. It's a it's a class where we talk about mythology. And history, and the you know the dawn of the the collision of humans and molecules. So what were you thinking about that? Before? Zombie powder. Zombie powder. <laughs> yeah. and, so, and yeah. To begin with, <laughs> yes. No, Vicky, it can't happen. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm, maybe that relates to the last question in some ways, uh, uh, mythology and aspects. Uh, uh, the project that of yours that most impacted the scientific community. Yeah, so far it, it's been a website that I made um, in the first couple years that I was <laughs> that I was at Rochester. It's called Not Voodoo, and it actually doesn't have anything to do with zombies. Um, that was something that uh, always frustrated me as a graduate student is that I, I would say, well, well, you know, why can't I get this to happen? Why why can't I get this to happen the way it happened in the literature? And my colleagues around me would say, well, you know, sometimes chemistry is voodoo. And you just can't explain it, and that always bothers me. And uh, and a lot of it has to do with technique. And so the the website is about the uh, um, the techniques in organic synthesis that that we learn from the very experienced people around us. And um, and it uh, and it's it's a website that's visited been visited a lot over the years. Let's put it that way. How, how many and, hits does it get? Um, there's probably about four thousand visitors a week. A week. Mm -hmm. Yep, something like something along those lines. Yeah. So geez. around the world. What's the most bizarre question you've had on that site? Does, I don't. I don't answer questions. Oh, it just has information. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> there's no, yeah. there's no back and forth on it. Not well. There's there's uh, there's there's pages where you can um, you can you can add mistakes that you've made rookie mistakes. Okay. So there's pages and pages of. Yeah. Really crazy, and there's a, so the, so the rookie mistakes are divided into categories: explosions, fires, floods, spills, okay. reagents. And there's one that I just made recently called "Just Wow," okay. because it's something that you would only really happen ever once. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if only one person would make this particular mistake. 
Thank you. So awesome. thank, yeah. It was uh, very, very good of you to answer all these questions. Yeah. And uh, in closing, if, I'll just say uh, well, we look forward to your publications in Synlet and Synthesis in the future. And in a department which is heavily oriented towards synthesis for a long, long time, with names such as Schlesinger, Kendi, and of course Bob Beckman, you are sort of the new star up and coming Thank at you. that department. So we look yeah. forward to seeing more of your work in the future. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.